Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to Chapter 4, Section 4, Video Lesson on Reduction and Oxidation of Reactions, also called redox reactions. From class, we learned that reduction means gaining electrons and oxidation means losing electrons. One uh, helpful mnemonic device to help us memorize this is something called oil rig. You know what oil rigs are. They're used to help us excavate and pump oil. But oil rig. What this can mean in terms of oxidation and reduction is that oxidation is losing, electrons that is, and reduction is gaining. Oil rig will help you remember which one's losing, which one's gaining in that. Let's look at an example of a reaction for reduction and oxidation. So the example is sodium metal reacts in copper 2 chloride solution. Now, first off, we have to decide whether these are going to react in the first place. Will sodium metal react with copper 2 chloride? Now, we're just going to focus on the metals themselves, copper and sodium. We have to turn to our metal activity series list or chart that we looked at in class. So the metal activity series has the most active metals at the top and the less active metals at the bottom. Since sodium is above copper, that means sodium will readily dissolve into the copper. So yes, this reaction will take place. Now, let's actually do the redox portion of it. In class, we went over how redox reactions have half reactions. The first half reaction deals with sodium metal and the electron transfer that it's going through. So we did that. We start off with... Sodium metal as a neutral metal. Now, sodium metal is going to eventually become an ion because it's reacting with this copper solution. When it does that, we know that sodium having one valence electron is going to lose that one valence electron and become Na1+. But it doesn't <clears throat> just become Na1+, well, it does become Na1+, but on this other side of the reaction, we have the one electron that it lost, because these sides have to be balanced. This is a neutral atom of sodium. This is sodium cation plus the electron that it lost. These are equal sides. This is our oxidation, and we'll call it oxidation half reaction, because it's half of the process. Now, my copper 2 chloride solution, remember in a solution we have an ionic solution like so, we have the cations floating around that are separated from the anions. They're dissociated. So floating around, being available to use, are copper 2 plus ions. These copper 2 plus ions are going to get the electrons that the sodium releases. So they're going to get two electrons in order to become neutral. This doesn't want to just gain one and become copper one plus. It wants to go all the way and become neutral copper. Since it is gaining electrons, this is my reduction half reaction. Now, why does this occur? We notice that sodium only lost one electron to become Na1+. If that's the case, then, well, how did copper gain two electrons? If sodium lost one, how did copper gain two? It doesn't make sense initially, but let's look a little deeper into it. So we know this. We've done this many times before when we talked about ionic bonding. Now. Inside that beaker, you have solid sodium, and you're putting it into a solution of copper 2 sulfate, which is aqueous. So you have solid, these little circles here represent solid sodium, and I'm going to call them Na. Hopefully you can see that. That's Na, meaning 
sodium. This is solid, compact. And when this is put into a solution of copper sulfate, those loose copper 2 plus ions that are just floating around, they react with, and these are just floating around, they're loose. They react with the sodium. Now that sodium has one valence electron. Thus, it's going to lose one valence electron to achieve an octet. When it loses that one valence electron, it's going to lose it to this copper 2 plus ion. But that doesn't satisfy this copper 2 plus to go back down to its neutral state. It only went down one oxidation state. It needs to go down another. So, Another sodium atom with one valence electron comes along and gives the other one to that copper 2 plus. So that's how copper 2 plus gains two electrons. It takes two sodium atoms. Now, rewind that if you need to see that again. But to account for this, we must balance the equation so that the electrons gained match the electrons lost. In reality, sodium metal gave one electron to the copper two, to copper two plus ions, but it took two sodium, ion, two sodium atoms to do that, and they gave one apiece. So we have to kind of fix this equation here. It's the same thing we had in the last board. Sodium lost an electron to form Na plus. Copper two plus gained two electrons to form <clears throat> elemental copper. One's oxidation, one's reduction. We have to balance these equations just like we balance any other equation. But we want to balance the electrons. This is where it's a little different. This is electrochemistry, so we're dealing with electrons. And we do that by multiplying the entire equation by 2 in this case. We have two electrons here. We only have one electron here. If we multiply this entire equation by 2, Let's look at what happens. This 2 gets distributed into everything that's there in the equation. So if we bring it down here, <clears throat> after we do that, we have, I'm going to change markers again, guys. 2Na, so this is a chop reaction, going to 2Na plus plus two electrons. It took two sodium atoms, and it produced two Na plus ions, and these, uh, these atoms lost two electrons. And we still have this equation here, just as it was. And we keep it as it was because our electron counts are now the same. Now, I want to start forming my overall reaction. And in my overall complete net reaction, I do not have electrons in that equation. And it makes sense because one atom lost electrons, the other one gained electrons, so those two processes cancel each other out. So I don't, or I'm not going to have these in the next process or in the next segment. So let's keep that in mind. I'll just put it, actually I'll put that right there and I'll put it here just so we can see. Now if I add these two up, I add up everything on the reactant side in both half reactions. I add, add everything on the product side in both half reactions. So in my reactant side I have 2Na on one side of the arrow. And on this side, I have copper 2 plus. So I add those two up, it's 2Na plus copper 2 plus. That's it. Now I'm ready for the products. I have 2Na plus and elemental copper. 
to an A plus in elemental copper. Now, does this make sense? Yes, it does. If we think about our initial reaction, our initial reaction was between elemental sodium, sodium metal, reacting with a solution of copper to chloride. Now, <clears throat> so I'm just going to rewrite this up here. 2Na is copper 2 plus goes to 2Na plus plus elemental copper. Now, in my Initial reaction, I took, I took out the chloride. I haven't talked about that yet. We're just talking about metals. Now let's put the chloride in and see if it actually makes sense. Like how can these ions be here by themselves? They're actually not. What's actually happening in that beaker is different. We're just accounting for the electrons now. So let's just go with, it was elemental sodium. Elemental sodium react with copper 2 chloride, which is copper, copper chloride. This came from copper 2 plus ion and a chloride ion, which is Cl1 minus, crisscross applesauce. You get this compound up here. That creates, up there we have Na plus, but it's actually not Na plus by itself. It's NaCl. So this came from Na plus and the Cl minus. Chloride, crisscross, we get NaCl. And lastly, we have elemental copper. If we balance this equation, two here and a two here. This looks very much like this. The only difference is here I'm adding in my chloride ions. This is what actually happens in that beaker. Everything before it is why it happens in that beaker. Hope this helps, guys. Um, if you have any questions, email me and take notes on this stuff. It helps.